The Testament of Simeon, the second son of Jacob and Leah, chapter 1. Simeon, the second son of Jacob and Leah, the strong man, he becomes jealous of Joseph and is an instigator of the plot against Joseph. Yusuf is how you pronounce that. We have 20 verses. The copy of the words of Simeon. Is that Shmavun? The things which he spake to his sons before he died in the hundred and twentieth year of his life, at which time Joseph his brother died. For when Simeon was sick, his sons came to visit him, and he strengthened him, and sat up and kissed them, and said, Hearken, my children, to Simeon your father, and I will declare unto you what things I have in my heart. I was born of Jacob as my father's second son, and my mother Leah called me Simeon because my Lord had heard her prayer. Moreover, I became strong exceedingly. I shrank from no achievement, nor was I afraid of aught. For my heart was hard, and my liver was immovable, and my bowels without compassion. Because valor also has been given from the Most High to men in soul and body. For in the time of my youth, I was jealous in many things of Joseph, because my father loved him beyond all. And I set my mind against him to destroy him, because the prince of deceit sent forth the spirit of jealousy, blinded my mind, so that I regarded him not as a brother, nor did I spare even Jacob my father. But his God, and the God of his fathers, sent forth his angel, and delivered him out of my hands. 4. When I went to Shechem to bring ointment for the flocks, and Reuben to Dothan, where were our necessaries, and all our stores, Judah, my brother, sold him to the Ishmaelites. And when Reuben heard these things, he was grieved, for he wished to restore him to his father. But on the hearing this, I was exceedingly wroth against Judah, in that he let him go away alive. And for five months I continued wrathful against him. But the Lord, by Lord, I presume they mean Yahweh, which is increasing existence. Lord doesn't really come out as one of the translations of this, but but the Lord restrained me and withheld from me the power of my hands, for my right hand was half withered for seven days. And I knew, my children, that because of Joseph, this had befallen me. And I repented and wept, and I besought the Lord God that my hand might be restored, and that I might hold aloof from all pollution and envy, and from all folly. For I knew that I had devised an evil thing before the Lord, and Jacob my father on account of Joseph my brother, in that I envied him. And now, my children, hearken unto me, and beware the spirit of deceit and envy. For envy ruleth over the whole mind of a man, and suffereth not, uh, and suffereth him neither to eat, nor to drink, nor to do any good thing. But it ever suggesteth to him to destroy him, that he envieth, and so long as he is envied flourisheth. He that envieth fadeth away. Two years, therefore, I afflicted my soul with fasting and the fear of the Lord, and I learned that deliverance from envy cometh by the fear of God. For if a man flee to the Lord, and again, I presume they mean Yahweh, um, God is a noun and verb, established, establishing. The evil spirit runneth away from him, and his mind is lightened, and henceforward he sympathizeth with him whom he envied, and forgiveth those who are hostile to him, and so ceaseth from his envy. Chapter 2, Reuben counsels his hearers against envy. 15 verses. And my father asked concerning me, because he saw that I was sad, and I said unto him, I am pained in my liver, for I mourned more than they all, because I was guilty of the selling of Joseph. And when we went down into Egypt, and he bound me as a spy, I knew that I was suffering justly, and I grieve not. Now Joseph was a good man, and had the Spirit of God within him, being compassionate and pitiful. He bore no malice against me, but loved me even as the rest of his brethren. Beware, therefore, my children, of all jealousy and envy, and walk in the singleness of heart, that God may give you also grace and glory, and blessing upon your heads, even as he saw in Joseph's case. All his days he reproached us, not concerning this thing, but loved us as his own soul, 
and beyond his own sons glorified us, and gave us riches and cattle and fruits. Do ye also, my children, love each one his brother, with a good heart, and with a spirit of envy, will withdraw from you. This maketh savage the soul, and destroyeth the body. It causeth anger and war in the mind, and stirreth up into deeds and bl of blood, and leadeth the mind into frenzy, and causeth tumult to the soul, and the trembling to the body. For even in sleep malicious jealousy gnaweth, and with wicked spirits disturbeth the soul, and causeth the body to be troubled, and waketh the mind from sleep and confusion, and as a wicked and poisonous spirit, so appeareth it to men. Therefore was Joseph comely in appearance, and goodly to look upon, because no wicked, no wickedness dwelt in him. For some of the trouble of the spirit, the face manifesteth. And now, my children, make your hearts good before the Lord, and your ways straight before men. And ye shall find grace before the Lord and men. Beware, therefore, of fornication. For the fornication is the mother of all evils, separating from God, and bringing near to Beliar. Now, Beliar, um, slightly different etymology. Look up the, like the Goetia number 68, right? Um, for more about that, but Belial, uh, worthless, wicked. Not no masters. Um... Yes, but not in the context of oh, I don't accept. Uh, you know, uh, you know, I, uh, you know, um, maybe they don't accept it, but you know, that's nothing on me. You could say is a way to translate that one. Um, for I have seen it inscribed in the writing of Enoch that your sons shall be corrupted in fornication and shall do harm to the sons of Levi with the sword. Well, okay, maybe that's true, but. It doesn't mean it's not their fault. Predestined doesn't mean that these people didn't have the choice. You're predestined to have opportunity and certain things that can come from choices, whatever. But um, to do harm some feelings. But they shall not be able to withstand Levi, for he shall wage war of the Lord and shall conquer all your hosts. And they shall be few in number, divided in Levi and Judah, for there shall be none of you for sovereignty even as also our Father prophesied in his blessings. Chapter 3, a prophecy of the coming of the Messiah, 17 verses, and of course, in Tanakh, there's a bunch of Messiahs. And does it limit that to only the ones mentioned therein? Um, no, there's probably more Messiahs than there were named prophets, but um, that's another point entirely. Um, Behold, I have told you all things, that I may be acquitted of your sin. Now if you remove from you your envy and all stiff-neckedness, as a rose shall my bones flourish in Israel, and a lily my flesh in Jacob. Yaqub is how you pronounce his name, but there's no J sound. Um, and my odor shall be as the odor of Lebanus, and as cedars shall holy ones be multiplied from me forever, and their branches shall stretch afar off. Then shall perish the seed of Canaan, and as a remnant shall not be unto Amalek. And all the Cappadocians shall perish, and all the Hittites shall be utterly destroyed. Then shall fail the hand of Ham, and all the people shall perish. Then shall all the earth rest from trouble, and all the world under heaven from war. Then the mighty one of Israel shall glorify Shem. For the Lord God shall appear on earth and himself save men, and shall all the spirits of deceit be given to be trodden underfoot. And men shall rule over wicked spirits, and then shall I rise in joy and will bless the marvel, the Most High because his, of his marvelous works, because God hath taken a body and eaten with men and saved men. And there's certain contexts like this, uh, all this of God stuff. It doesn't mean that God physically incarnates, it's that somebody is like Daniel. Daniel wasn't the physical incarnation of God, but all those names that end in Al or Yah, or however you're going to pronounce those two sets of two letters, um, are as that way. But the fact that those words are like that, that it's at the end, that proves that they're not God, they're not part God, they're not literally Son of God. That's that's just what the language is telling you. Um, 
And now, my children, obey Levi and Judah, and be not lifted up against these two tribes. For from them shall arise unto you the salvation of God, and, and the Lord shall raise up from Levi, as it were, a high priest, and from Judah, as it were, a king, God and man. He shall save all the Gentiles and all the race of Israel. Now, Gentile, Gawiam, those who've turned their back on God, well, if they stop turning their back on God. But you haven't turned your back on God just because you were born from a different family. No. Um, and the race of those who struggle for God. You sure? All. You know. All. You know. Uh, kind of like a Mujahideen. Same sort of term. Except Israel has you know, the name God in it. So, um, therefore, I give you these commands that you also may command your children that they may observe them throughout the generations. And when Simeon had made an end of commanding his sons, he slept with his fathers, being an hundred and twenty years old. And they laid him in a wooden coffin to take up his bones to Hebron, and they took them up secretly during a war of the Egyptians over the bones of Joseph, the... Egyptians guarded in the tombs of the kings, for the sorcerers took, told them that on the departure of the bones of Joseph there should be throughout all the land darkness and gloom and an exceeding great plague to the Egyptians, so that even with a lamp a man should not recognize his brother. And the sons of Simeon bewailed their father, and they were in Egypt until the day of their departure by the hand of Moses.